Okay, more load testing. So in this video, we'll be looking at fetching data. So if you have an endpoint where you can give it an ID, say one, two, three, four, um, how you're gonna do that and how you're gonna output the results. So in here, this is the new server. It still has the login just because you gotta get used to it. Most services will have a login. Um, but I've added this new endpoint called slash user slash ID. So what it's going to do is first of all, check that you are logged in and then it's going to get this ID and see if it can find a user up here. If it doesn't find a user, then it'll, re it'll return 404 and just say user not found. Um, otherwise it'll return the user as a JSON response. So let's see what that looks like. So because of this, authorization header is getting a bit complex and I'm gonna move into Postman. So if I give it an ID that exists here, it'll return a user. But if it doesn't exist, it'll give me no user found. So let's see how we can handle this in over in Locus. So we're still doing the login thing with the token up here, but now we, uh, we have this user page where we just randomly pick a user ID. Let's go from zero to, to eight. And then we make a request to users plus the user ID and we do authorization as before. So can we remember if this includes, but let's say we have zero, one and two. So it's probably free. And let's try and run this. Let's just have a single one so we can see what's going on. Remember the HTTP. Let's see, oh, I made a typo up here. Can I change that? No, got to start over. Actually, we need to run it again. One user, one HTTP. There we go. Okay, as you can see, it's randomly picking between these. Let's see if we get, we actually got a free. So that means it does include free over here. Let's wait until we get a one. All right, there we go. So you see the problem here is that what if we had thousands of users, it would return thousands of rows. Um, and even some of them might fail so the good thing is that we can actually see they fail here. We can get failures and it'll tell us exactly what happened. So f seven times it tried to get user number three and it simply doesn't exist. So it does mess up our data here. Like it'll still show us the response time. Um, but if we download the CSV file, we can easily filter out those who fail because it'll list them here as fails. Um, but back to the main topic is that how do we merge these into a single row because we don't really want to know how long time it takes to fetch each user, but more like each endpoint. So if we stop this, it's actually quite simple. You just got to say, you got to give it a name. So let's call it users. Just got to remember the comma. And then let's run it again. So let's go with 10 this time, faster result. So there we go. You can now see that it actually puts them all together in a single row called users, regardless of which user it actually uh, fetches. On the other hand, we still have all these failures. So, well, it depends what you want to test, but maybe you wanted to make sure when testing that it actually finds a real user. So here I'm just picking a random number. Um, so of course that's error prone. Um, or maybe you want to include the failures. Like, um, 
it doesn't have to be a difference between fetching a user and and then actually returning one and uh, fetching a user where it doesn't exist. But maybe there is. That's up to you. But I think that's it. A short video, but that's all I wanted to say for now. So I'm going to stop here.